wonderful weekend. W-R-A-N. Hi, boys and girls. It's me. And welcome to my radio lair. Uh, complete with now a working RCA advertising clock over my bench. So, really happy with the way that turned out. Hey, listen, if you're one of the, the, the new people that have uh, come over to my channel from watching Alan W2AEW's channel, uh, thank you for com coming by and hopefully you've subscribed. If not, hit the red button and uh, that kind of helps me along here with the channel. Um, this morning I was watching some uh, some videos after uh, Ms. RW went to work and I came across my buddy Rob's channel. Uh, his channel is called the 741 channel and he's also a ham. Uh, his call is N1NUG, uh, November 1, November Uniform Gulf, and uh, he, he resides out in eastern Connecticut. Um, got to meet him this summer. If you go to my, uh, if, if you go to my Sussex uh, Hamfest 2021 uh, video, uh, you'll see me walking and talking with Rob, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, some of you may already know him. If not, uh, take a look at his channel, too. But his video this morning was kind of interesting. He was getting ready to take a CB radio and basically power it up. But he wanted to do it safely. He wanted to do it uh, using some safety tools. And I'll, I'll explain what that's all about. Uh, and then maybe later on you can go watch his uh, video as well. I'll put the link underneath the description of this video so you can go uh, check out his channel if you haven't already. Okay, boys and girls. Well, here's here's what I used to use, and um, this is kind of my backup, so to speak. But you'll you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. You know, when when you're powering up an old radio, it doesn't matter if it's uh, well, I would consider a newer radio, like Rob's uh, CB Radio Day was doing in his video. Um, I'm dealing with a lot of uh, you know radios that use tubes, and some of the radios I have to deal with don't even have transformers in them. So safety becomes kind of important, especially with the fact that you don't want to not only just not damage the radio, but you also don't want to shock yourself and test start testing the radio. So to do that, and to do it safely, I have here this old Variac, which actually works just well. And what this does is it varies the voltage and current that I'm putting to the radio, and that gets plugged in to this isolation tray, this is called an isolation transformer. And in between all that, then I have here to the right a dim bulb. So what the dim bulb, the isolation transformer is primarily for, or really kind of kind of works well when you're dealing with AC-DC radios or transformerless radios. Uh, radios even like uh, battery uh, sets like a Transoceanic or a farm set. Uh, could even be a three dialer, okay? So by having this transformer here, if if yeah, I, I used to talk to some of these old repair people, and they say that the, there used to be this kind of unwritten law that was called a one hand rule. So you got one hand, and let's say this is the radio. It's I know it's an isolation transformer, but you have your hand on the radio. The last thing you want to do is take your second hand and touch something else on the radio because you can complete the circuit and shock yourself. All right, now. Um, this is this this video is really just for entertainment purposes only. I just want to share this with you. Um, I, I do practice a lot of safe things around here, so I don't get hurt or I hurt any radios. All right. So when it comes to AC DC sets, an isolation transformer is a good thing to have here also. But it's also an extra measure of safety with the Variac when you're working with a transformer set. Now, last but not least. The dim bulb tester, now you'll see in Rob's video, I hope you, after you watch my video, you watch Rob's video, and I saw him do something I thought was really cool that I'd never thought about. Now, I'm using a dim bulb tester in case there's just, say, say an inrush of current or something we're going to short out or whatever, by having the basically the, the isolation transformer and everything hooked together, if I'm bringing up the power on the radio and something were to short out or... There was a, an excessive amount of current being drawn. It'll actually break the bulb, and if this bulb would then act as like a fuse, okay? And then I could just simply, if this this got blown, I could just simply, you know, unscrew the bulb, take this out, and find another bulb to put in here, okay? 
And that's what the radio people used to do years and years ago when testing their radio. But, you know, as you can see, I, I don't have really a big work area and it gets kind of, it'll get crowded in here real quick. So I don't, I don't use any of these things anymore, but this is my backup. But let me show you what I use now. Okay, boys and girls, well, now I'm using this. And let me, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what this, this little box is. This is basically my, my test kit in a box. What you have is a Variac right here. Let me get my pointer. So we have a Variac. You have a voltmeter here, AC voltmeter, that you could raise and lower the voltage. So as you bring the voltage up and down the Variac, the voltage can be displayed here as an AC voltmeter. Directly above it, this yellow thing is an AC current meter. Okay, so now I could actually see in, in, in milliamps how much current I'm drawing as I'm bringing up the power to the radio. Okay, inside of here also, besides this Variac, there is an isolation transformer. Okay, so I have an isolation transformer. I got a, a AC voltmeter, AC ammeter, and then also I have, and you have this little uh, P-touch tape here with the word isolated, and you have two outlets. We have a variable outlet here that works directly with the Variac, and then this one that's marked direct, and this is directly off of my line voltage, which is usually 124, 125 volts. There's a switch here that I could go to direct or variable. Okay, this is just an extra switch that will bring the direct on all by itself automatically. And then this, this toggle switch here is just simply to turn the amp meter on and off. I usually leave it on and then I have a, a switch here. And now you can see on the display, the, uh, the, the current meter is on, but there's nothing hooked up to it. But when this is, this is operated off of a battery, there's a nine volt battery that's built into the back of this thing. So I have to remember to turn that off. I've, I've actually forgotten and <laughs> left that on a couple times. And then uh, here, let me uh, bring this up here. There's also a scale on the meter that shows you, uh, it's, there's four different scales. You have a two milliamp, 20 micro, 20, two milliamp, 20 milliamp, 200 milliamp and a five amp scale for the meter as well. And then also, in lieu of a dim bulb, we have fused outlets. Okay, in the variable outlet, I have a two amp fuse, or no, excuse me, a one amp. No, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me get this right. The top one's the variable one. In the variable, which works with the Variac, I have a one amp fuse. So that's the same as my dim bulb tester. And then the one below that, is the variable fuse. So each one of these outlets has its own isolation right here. So if something were to go wrong with either of these outlets, I have a fused uh, outlet for either or, and they're separate. So this is really, really well built. Now, I, I can't take the credit for this. I actually purchased this from a member of the Delaware Valley Historic Radio Club, which unfortunately the man that made it, he just passed away about six months ago or so. And uh, I don't want to divulge his name, but he was actually a pretty bright guy. And I had bought a couple radios from him, including I have a, a, a 7000 D7000 Transoceanic that I had purchased from him. But he brought this to a meeting one time, and I was so impressed with the way this was built. Um, he offered it to the club members, and I kind of stood back thinking, okay, maybe a newbie would like to have this or something, but nobody was uh, interested. And uh, I won't tell you how much I paid for it, but it was worth every penny because for what I paid for it, you couldn't buy all the individual parts, the Variac, the isolation transformer, uh, the meters, you know, all these pieces, if you had to, like, build it yourself, I, I this was like significantly less money than what this gentleman was asking for it, so I, I had to get it. The other nice thing is is that this whole unit is portable. It has this handle that he built into it on top, so you grab it and take it with you. And um, the New Jersey Antique Radio Club is having one of its uh, 2022 repair clinics this coming Saturday, and I'll just grab it and bring this right along with me. Here's a picture of the back of the unit. Made a little wooden reel here so you could take the, the cord and just 
wrap it up and then you can unwrap it whenever you need to use it. And a little block diagram of all the connections and everything within the power supply. Let me back take the back cover off so you can see what's actually inside. Okay, here's a picture of the inside of the uh, testing supply. Okay, here's your variac down here in the lower right part of your picture here. Over here, this is the actually isolation transformer, and look at the size of this thing. It's just it's, it's just a one big big uh, piece of iron right there. And in front of that, the sockets and everything with the fuse holders are there. Um, he made this little I don't know what you want to call it, but this is just a holder that plugs everything in. I thought that was kind of cool the way he did that, so if, if there was ever a problem, you could simply just unplug all this stuff and get access to it rather quickly and easily. So this was a well thought out uh, piece that uh, this gel had made. And then up here in the yellow, this is the uh, the amp meter here, and you can actually, well, it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but there's a red and, and uh, uh, red and black wire going here, and... Uh, that's actually part of the switch for the on and off here. And then there's a screw up high where you can undo that and then change the, the nine volt battery. So, and then of course it's all built in this nice little uh, wooden box. And uh, you know, I, I'm not that great, but I can do carpentry work, but I'm not really that good at it. I mean, I can, I could do it, but it just takes me longer than the average Joe. And I thought he did a rather nice little neat job and painted it this, uh, this little gray color, so. Anyway, so this is my testing supply, and I've been using this now over the last two years. Um, it's been absolutely flawless, except for one of the uh, one of the toggle switches, one of the contacts went bad, so I had to replace the toggle switch. Okay, boys and girls, well, that's it for today. I uh, hope you liked the video. And uh, listen, if you haven't already, if you decide that you like watching this video, uh, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and uh, comment and uh, let me know how I'm doing, how, how you like the videos. Looks like here in Central Jersey, we're supposed to uh, get a little little weather here coming uh, Friday night. Right now it's about, uh, well, it's almost two o'clock Friday afternoon. So uh, I know right now I've seen people driving around and uh, as one of my, my coworkers used to say, he says, well, it look like, looks like uh, everybody's out on the French toast alerts. They're going out to the stores and buying their milk, eggs, and bread. So I'll just say so make their, their French toast. Anyway, take care and thanks for stopping by. See you sometime down the road real soon. Bye-bye. The 525 edition of WRAN Sports is brought to you by Jim Salerno Pontiac, 228 East Blackwell Street, corner of South Salem and Dover, where their customers send their friends. The United States had another great day at Wimbledon in taking a few more titles, and in the standout match, Jimmy Connors captured the men's crown by defeating the sentimental favorite of the crowd, 39-year-old Ken Rosewall of Australia. You've just been listening to the 525 edition of WRAN Sports, brought to you Monday through Saturday by Jim Salerno Pontiac, 228 East Blackwell Street, corner of South Salem and Dover.